Hello there, friends and neighbors. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel a wee bit peckish. Which means, of course, it is time for another comic cook! The show where we take just about anything comic book related and turn it into foodstuffs. It's also the sub-show I tend to trot out when I'm late or, f for any reason, delayed on a regular WEGAF Reviews episode, which I went into in my last Comic Cook episode, so never mind all that. Enough of all that. You've heard it already. You don't want to hear about it. Let's talk about Aquaman. Now, I know I'm far from the first guy on the internet to say so, but... Everyone needs to stop making jokes about Aquaman. Just because he tends to be a bit highly specialized doesn't mean he's not cool. The dude is awesome! He's the ruler of the ocean, the king of Atlantis, and if he set his mind to it, he could kill you with whales. So stop ragging on Aquaman. Aquaman needs more respect, and I'm the guy who's gonna give it to him. Because this is America that I'm in, and Aquaman is an American character, and in America, you don't get true respect until your name is on a hamburger. So, I'm going to make an Aquaman burger. And it's not going to be any just any old burger, no. It's going to be a fish burger. Kitchen. To make the Aquaman burger, you will need the following items and ingredients. A large knife, a chopping board, a fork, and a regular knife. A cheese slicer, a spatula, or whatever you call this thing. A small pan with lid. A Hawaiian-style burger bun. One salmon burger patty. Tartar sauce, watercress, cheese, the ingredient which I swear will someday not be included in one of these videos, but this is not the day. Some olive oil, or really any cooking oil would probably do, but I use olive oil for preference. Some pickles of your choice, these are bread and butter. And last but very much not least, one orange. Let's get started on this burger. First, a word on these buns, which, as you can tell, I pre-toasted. This is just a word of warning. If you, too, like your buns toasted, be very careful with these Hawaiian-style burger buns. They're... because I learned the hard way that they burn very, very easily. These are fine, but, you know, watch your step. Anyway, you don't, you don't have to use these. You can use any kind of burger bun. I just chose Hawaiian because, you know, island. It's the sea theme. Moving on. Tartar sauce. Now, this should be fairly obvious, given that this is a fish burger we're doing. Um, I know there are probably plenty of people who are like, well, I can make tartar sauce better than that. Go ahead. I'm just using this stuff for convenience sake. Um, so this is being used as, like, you know, essentially a fill-in for um, your one's preferred burger condiments such as uh, mayonnaise in my case but or you know mustard or whatever but a word of warning you know you can be a little generous but don't don't go too far over the top because this is tangy stuff and it or so far as I'm concerned it is and it could kind of overpower things if you're not careful but it ooh that's see that's too much. I'm gonna have to spread it around. <laughs> but, yeah. That's the tartar sauce. Next, the secret ingredient. The orange. Now, this is actually something I'm a little proud of in terms of leaps of culinary logic. You see, I like, um, I like tomato on my burgers normally. You know, it's not really complete without a little bit of that tomato-y sort of punch. But you only get good tomato during the summer, right? So I was thinking, what's a good substitute? Well, how about orange? And I tried it, 
and it works. It's not quite, it's not exactly the same thing, of course, because you don't get that kind of savory um, kick that a tomato has. But still, you can use it basically like orange. I've tried it on, uh, like tomato. You can just put a slice or so of it on, you know, in this case a burger, or you can do it a sandwich. It works. You just slice it like this, see? And then you make another little cut there, see? Nice, like that. And peel the peel <laughs> away until you just got the inside like this. And once you're done with that, you just place it on your burger bun like so. And just put as much of that on as you would put tomato on. So, you know, nice few slices. And then you can wrap up the rest of the orange and eat it later. So, it's a good deal all around. Yeah, look at that. Does that not look mouth-watering? I mean, maybe you're thinking, oh, this, this is a weird combination of elements, but no, it's actually pretty good. Next, the watercress. Now, obviously I am following a theme here, Aquaman watercress. Uh, for those of you who haven't um, worked with watercress before, um, it is a rather delicate little plant. Um, you've probably heard of it. It's got a nice sort of a sort of a taste, but you want to be careful with it. You have to put only like the leaves and the stems there, or the the these bits. You see, not not this main bit here. And if you're doing this burger, you want to put on a fair amount because there's some strong flavors here. And while the watercress has a nice sort of a flavor of its own, it can get overwhelmed rather easily if you don't, you know, pile it on. Also, you want to make sure you do this not long after buying the watercress because it has a very short shelf life. It only lasts, it only stays fresh for, a, for like a couple of days. Anyway, so I'll finish up piling on the watercress and then show you the result. End result. There we go. See? Nice heaping help in a watercress. Now then, what comes next? Can you guess? That's right. Cheese! Now, I assume you all know how to slice cheese, so I won't even bother describing it. Let's just cut again to the end result. There's the cheese. Um, maybe it looks like a little bit of a lot, but I like my burgers cheesy. This is Colby. Is that, well, it's actually a combo of a Colby and a little of this kind of nice cheddar we had in the house, but it can be any kind of burger cheese you like. Anyway, so this is the basic prep all done. Now all that remains is the burger itself. So let's get to that. Now, purists among you may say, well, that look, that salmon burger looks terrible. I could make something better than that. You probably could, because this is actually a frozen thing I got from the supermarket. Um, but it will do. They taste fine. So, um, it's a pretty simple means of preparation. You just put it in the pan, and uh, four on four minutes each side, I believe, and, uh, you know, you need the olive oil for that, that's why, I, huh? and <clears throat> so I'll cut back to when I turn it, which is when the cheese will come into play, other than that, you know, you don't need just to see it, so, onward! Mm, yeah, looking fairly decent, looking fairly good, yeah, isn't that sizzle? Now, we put the cheese on side two and plop on the lid and in five minutes it should be melted and then 
we may assemble our Aquaman burger at long last. So, back in five. And there we have it. Look at that. Is that not a thing of beauty? It's almost done. There's just one last step we need to do. A few pickles for preference. You don't really, really need those because there's plenty of pickle type stuff in the tartar sauce, but I like me some pickles. Yeah, that's the final ingredient. That's what you needed the fork for. And now just on with the top. Et voila! The Aquaman burger! Uh, you know, I think I actually got the bun upside down, but who cares? It'll still be good. And here we have it, folks. The Aquaman burger and or Aqua burger, depending on how snappy a title you want, in the flesh. So yeah, I was correct. I did put the burger bun upside down, but you all know what a right side up burger looks like, right? I like to be different. <laughs> anyway, one way or another it'll taste fine. So let's give this puppy a taste. Hmm. Yeah. That's good. This really is. This is a pretty good one. I must say. Mm. Mm. I'm getting sloppy. Who cares? This is pretty good. It's. Mm, a very unique combination of elements that I've never tasted before before I came up with this. I suspect most people won't have either. It's the key thing, I think. I mean, the the uh, tartar sauce is nice and zingy. The pickles, uh, that little bit of crunch. Mm. The fish is nice. And the oranges. Oh, wait. It's water fresh. That's a little. Mm. It's more of a background than anything else, but it's got a zing to it. You can't really replace with anything else. And the orange. Which, incidentally, I forgot to mention earlier. Besides. Tasting great, and it really does taste great with this. Uh, probably the closest in terms of visual representation you can get to Aquaman's iconic golden chainmail armor. See, it's so shiny. <laughs> oh, seriously, it does. It does look quite a bit like it. So it's a hit in terms of nerdy stuff. And honestly, this is a pretty, this is uh, not only an interesting burger, kind of a high-class one, too, if you make it right. You put together your own salmon patties, get some nice fresh watercress, you know, slap some gourmet sort of Swiss or something on top of this, and nice pickles and so forth. You could have a, you could have a hit. This would, honestly, I would re recommend this one as a potential sort of introduce your guests to a new and interesting mm, for a gourmet burger. Of course, that's kind of me tooting my own horn. No one else has tried this yet. But seriously, give it a shot and see what you think. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Mm. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to go on and finish this lovely thing. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the Aquaman Burger, the making and the eating of. I know, I'm lovely to watch. <laughs> and one way or another, bon appetit.